and welcome to Only Connect, the quiz that's unafraid to mix high culture and low culture, the classic and the new. To us, the Elgin marbles have always been totes amazeballs. Joining me tonight, on my right, Colin Kidd, an accountant and Watford FC supporter who once won second prize in a Belfast Bonnie Baby competition. Mark Cooper, a civil servant who enjoys playing board games and taking long train journeys. And their captain, Josh Mandel, a fraud investigator and Oxford English graduate who is learning to play the accordion. United by a passion for maps, they are the Carter Files. So Josh, well done on finding the studio. How's your team been preparing for Only Connect? Well, we've memorised every fact in existence. Excellent. How long did that take? <laughs> a couple of weeks. Delighted to hear it. You will be facing Beverly Downs, a keen chef and food blogger with a passion for musical theatre. David Pritchard, a civil servant who enjoys bird watching and collecting fossils. And their captain, Hugh Pritchard, a former librarian who enjoys hill walking in North Wales with his whippet, Ted. Graduates of the University of Wales who all live and work in Wales, they are the Celts. Croeso canes, Hugh. Beth yw crefderau y tîm? Wel, mae gynnau ni ystod eang o crefderau dwi'n meddwl, a dwi'n gobeithio fod rhywbeth arbennig yn medru dod i fyny ni heddiw. Well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> We've changed the format slightly. You might remember if you saw last week. Now the teams don't have to win outright to go through. They can lose and still go through to a different sort of heat, which they then have to win or they go home. But if they win, they could go home later. And when you've understood that, please write in and explain it to me. <laughs> Round one, though, I think remains much the same. I just want to know what's the connection between four apparently random clues. Celts, you won the toss. Please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. OK, we'll have uh, two reads, please. The two reads. Ah, you're going to be seeing picture clues. What is the connection between them? Time starts now. Next. Don't it's a fort, is it? It's, it's a fort. It's some fort. India. It's India. India. Yeah. Next. Oh, um, they all red. red. They're yeah. all red. We think that they are all red. Coming in after three clues, you get two points. Red is the connection. There's the fourth clue. What are you looking at? Well, I think the second one is a red fort red somewhere fort, in India, yeah. is it? That's right, in Delhi. Um, I imagine the third one is a red mill. Red the Moulin, Moulin Rouge. Rouge. Red Wimmel, yeah. that's right. First one, I don't know, it's yeah, not it's Red, red, not red square, square, is it? Well, the last one's Red Square, I think. We don't know the first one. The last one's Red Square. That first one is the Alhambra, which means the red one in Arabic. The Alhambra in Granada in Spain. But well done for two points. Over to you, Carter Files, to choose a hieroglyph. We'll have the Twisted Flax, please. OK. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. She had a hit with that song 11 years after the other guy, but not sure enough. OK, next, please. She, she was in the Olympics. We need a number. Next. Next. Sometimes, oh, it's, it's age gaps. Um, she's married to Aaron Johnson. Yes. Yes. Exactly. He's younger. Um, he's younger than her. It's the age gaps between these ladies and their spouses. That is exactly what it is. The last one would have been Joan Collins, 32 years older than her husband. Do you know, <laughs> when I met my husband, he was younger than me, but I take five years off every birthday. <laughs> By our 10th anniversary, it'll be absolutely obscene on paper. Very well done, though. Two points to you as well. Back to the Celts to choose a glyph. Uh, lion, please. Lion. Ah, the music question. Always nice to hear that. You will be shouting next when you want to hear the next clue. Here's the first. Eyes of love I held tightly. That's so blue velvet, isn't it? Yeah, it's blue velvet. I hope probably didn't sing. Next, please. People dancing, people dancing. People dancing, people dancing. And they're all films, they're all names of films. They're all films. Have another go. The title of the song is the title of a film. 
That's what it is. They are songs that share their titles with the titles of films. Very well done. Three points for that. What did you hear? We heard um, Blue Velvet by Bobby Vinton, which mm. is a film by David Lynch, and we heard Boogie Nights by Heatwave, which is a film by Paul Thomas Anderson. Paul Thomas Anderson. Fantastic. We would have heard The Crying Game and Pretty Woman, but you didn't need to coming in after two clues. Excellent stuff. Carter Files, your turn. Water, please. Water. Let's see your clues starting now. That's part of a song. You know what? No, we need next. Rephrasing of something else. Yes. Next. Oh yes, it's uh, Mrs. Doubt. Mrs. Um. Ten seconds. From Peru. Uh, the, the Sheridan play. Mrs. Mrs. Malaprop. Mrs. Malaprop. Go on, Colin. They're malapropisms. They are malapropisms, as spoken by Mrs. Malaprop in Sheridan's The Rivals. You wanted to say Mrs. Doubtfire, didn't you? I nearly did. <laughs> I recognise that. Quiz brain freeze, we call it. Doubtfire, doubtfire. Yes, Mrs. Malaprop, who famously misquoted things to hilarious effect. Do you know what these quotes should be? What's she trying to say? The last one should be an alligator. On an alligator on the banks of the Nile. Pinnacle of pinnacle. politeness. That's right. He's the very pinnacle of politeness. He will solve my mystery. Uh, resolve. resolve. He will resolve my mystery. And the first one, I heard you say, is it a song? His physiognomy is so grammatical. It sounds like it's going to be modern major general, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's There's something very thought, Gilbert yeah. and Sullivan about it. It should be phraseology, apparently. His yeah. phraseology is so grammatical. But well done for the points. Nice high scoring round this is. Back to you, Celts, for the last choice of the round. Horned Viper, please. The Horned Viper. What is the connection here? Here's the first clue. Pardon? Next. Next, please. Civilization. Civilization 5. Is it a game? Was it was a game? What's what you said? Sid my game. I don't understand what you said. It's a computer say? game. Shall I say? Next. No, 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 no. Check it out. Next. Does that make sense? No. Ten seconds. Next. Next. Hexagonal. They are, yeah, I see, uh, hexagonal. They are hexagonal structures. What can you tell me about that first clue? Beverly knows about oh, it. It's a game, isn't it, Sid, Sid my uh, computer game? That's it, a computer simulation game. Blockbusters, though, a moment of tribute to that great quiz. We yes. revere our forefathers here at Only Connect. Blockbusters with the brilliant Bob Holness yeah. used, of course, yeah. a hexagonal board. Hexagons was the link. Well done. So the last clue, the Eye of Horus, is going to be for you, Carter Files. Your first clue is coming up now. Next. The last card. Yeah. yeah. Should I go for it? They're all last emperors or last monarchs. Brilliant. Coming in after two clues, you get three points. Last emperors. Last emperors of where? Puyi was the last emperor of China. Mm -hmm. Wilhelm II was the last emperor of Germany. Haile Selassie, Abyssinia, Ethiopia. And George VI mm -hmm. was the last emperor of India. A perfect answer. Stylish ending, I think, to a great round for both of you. At the end of round one, then, the Celts have got an excellent six points, but the Carter Files are ahead with seven. Round two is the sequences round. This time, teams, you still need to work out the connection, but I want to know what is fourth in the sequence. Celts, you will be first to pick a question. Uh, Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. OK, you may see up to three clues before giving me the answer. I want to know what's fourth. Here's the first. Human rights or something. Next. Government. Next. Geneva Conventions. Do you think? Yeah. Um, we do you want to next or? I, I don't know. Yeah, take the next. Take the next. Yeah. Yeah. Next again, please. Oh, it's the, oh, American, it's the American, American, American um, amendments. 
Okay, yes, I think. Uh, are they... Freedom. Oh, no. the what freedom. is fourth oh. in the sequence? Freedom of One. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. A beautifully given answer. You fumbled your way there. <laughs> <laughs> I will accept it. One, freedom of speech or freedom of the press or religion or assembly. They are, you know the connection, I think. What are they? Are they amendments to the American Constitution? Amendments to the US Constitution. That's right. Well Going down to one. Yeah. Yes, you were thinking Geneva Convention, then you saw number two. The right to bear arms. Yeah. Americans like that. How could it go wrong? How could that go wrong when everyone has a gun? I see no downside. I've got one. I haven't got one. Carter Files, over to you to pick a hieroglyph. We'll have two reads, please. Two reads. What is the fourth in this sequence? You'll be seeing pictures. What do you think you would see in the fourth picture? Here's the first. Yeah. So it's the four sides of the square. Yeah. Mm. But we don't know which way around they're going. Next. Next. Uh, oh, is it? It's the British Museum. Is it? Yeah. Is that on Trafalgar yeah. Square? Not sure. Okay. Okay. Next. Next. Oh, forget that. Don't know if that's like central station. It's a sequence in this. Ten seconds. I'm going to be bored. Should we guess something? I'm looking forward to this answer. Buckingham Palace. And why would it be Buckingham Palace? We have no idea at all. Mm, I'm afraid that's not the answer. So there's a bonus opportunity for you, Celts. We think it might be the Louvre. I need to go to the Louvre. That's exactly what it is. Why would it be the um, Musée du Louvre? They think so. The most visited museums, maybe, in the world. That's exactly yeah. what they are, and the well, Louvre that's... is the most popular. Yeah. What are the others? Oh, well, the National Gallery, I think, is number one, is it? Yeah. It is. What's number two? British, British Museum? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the third? I don't know. Third one is the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They oh, yeah. are the yeah, most sorry. visited art museums in the world, okay. most popular, the Louvre. OK, well done. Well done for the bonus, and you get to choose your own question. Um, water, then, please. Water. OK. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Oh, uh, well, it's, it's, he's a, a cyclist. He won the Tour de France. Uh, well, three, two, three. Go for the next one. Next, please. Well, this is likely to be a bad sounds from that. No, it'll be Bradley Wiggins. Go for Bradley Wiggins. Bradley Wiggins. In the quizzing world, Bradley Wiggins is the new red rum. When in doubt, say his name. Coming in after two clues, you get three points. The answer well is Bradley Wiggins. Why? Dave seems to know. It's something to do with cycling. They're consecutive <laughs> winners of the Tour de France. That's right. And Alberto Contador, he actually won it twice, but he won in 2009, and that's mm -hmm. the sequence, because Bradley Wiggins was the winner in right. 2012. Very good. OK, Carter Files, back to you. Lion, please. Lion. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. <laughs> Next. <laughs> no. No. Any ideas? It does feel like the gherkin, doesn't it? No, go Next. Next. Of representing the gherkin. What on earth is. Do we need one more? No, you can't get one more sequence. Oh, you do need one more, but. <laughs> Ten seconds. Any idea? Should I guess? He's on the top. He's on the top. He's on the top. He's on An image of something with a spiky top, like the shard. I'm afraid it is not an image of something with a spiky top like the shard. Right. So there's another bonus chance for the Celts. It's a shape. A shape. A square. <laughs> yes, obviously it's a shape. <laughs> I need you to be a, a little square. bit more specific. It is not a square. It would be a red circle. Let's have a look at it. Anyone? Oh, is it, um, oh, blimey, it's uh, Teletubbies. People at home will be <laughs> shouting at the screen. It's the Teletubbies in the order of the song and the title, Tinky Winky, Dipsy, La La and Poe. It's the aerials of the Teletubbies. We mix high and low culture, the classic and the new. And that was one of the new ones. So no points there, but Celts, you may choose a question. Um, twisted Flax, please. Twisted Flax. OK, what is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. Uh, 
up next. Is that it? It is something about the wood. Vogue. Why would it be Vogue? No idea. No idea at all. I'm afraid it's not Vogue. Carter Files, do you want to have a go for a bonus? We're going to have a guess at Stamen. I'm afraid Stamen is not the answer, but you are absolutely in the right area. They are the central parts of a flower going upwards, but it would be Stigma. Oh, unlucky. Stigma, which is mm. the part that receives unlucky. the pollen. And there's one question remaining, which is for you, the Horned Viper. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. Three equals red. That is the answer. And why is it the answer? It's a roulette wheel. Yes, as I know literally to my cost, they are the colours of numbers on a roulette wheel. Zero is green, or double zero, if you're foolish enough to play on an American wheel. One is red, two is black, three is red. At the end of round two, then, the Carter Files have got nine points, but the Celts are ahead with 12. Ooh. Time for the wall game. Little reference for old Etonians there. They get so little, after all. Carter Files, the wall, of course, 16 clues all jumbled up, needs sorting into four connected groups of four. It's your turn to go first now, so you have the choice, lion or water. Uh, we'll go lion, please. Lion. OK, there is only one perfect solution to this wall. I hope you find it. You've got two and a half minutes to do that, starting now. OK, right, there's well, music for the things. Cadenza, Coda, Coda Sting. 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 Um, Bridges. A bridge and Cadenza. Try that. No. What else um, is music? Okay, it's got to be music. What is no, no, no. That's got to be, can be nothing else, probably. You've got bits of the boat as well, haven't you? Bilge hold, galley. Yeah, look, let's take the music ones off because we don't want to see those. Passage. Bilge, galley, galley bridge. Water and bridge. You've got hold as that's well. Just, okay, hold. Billy. Uh, there you go. Someone's weapon. This Excalibur's that, a weapon. That, that's a weapon. Um, Okay. Sting is in Lord of the Rings. Okay. Is that is hunting a weapon? Yeah. Right. right. Remember, it's three strikes and you're out yes. now with Let's... two groups. You've got okay. plenty of time. So, a movement is musical. Cadenza, Coda, Coda. Coda. and bridge are all musical. But then that is passage, half past play, and flying trunk, which are all ballet. Are they? Things. Oh, yes. Movements, yes. That's way out of my comfort. Parts of a ship, swords. Um, bits of pop, pop, parts of music and ballet. Should we try that? Well, yeah, let's go in case it's yes. not right. Yeah, right. Movement, code, bridge. You've solved the wall. Fantastic. So that's an immediate four points for solving it. And there are bonus points, of course, for telling me the connections. OK, let's start at the top. Bilge, hold, galley, wardroom. Those are all parts of a ship. They're compartments on a ship. Next one, Mjolnir, Sting, Fronting, Excalibur. Those are all the names of swords, weapons. Any more about those weapons? Sting is Bilbo's sword, or possibly Frodo's in Lord of the Rings. Apparently it it's used by both of them. Oh, they go. both have a go. Excalibur, yes. I think we all know, is King Arthur. King Arthur's sword, but not the sword in the stone, which people think it is. He pulls one sword out of the stone, but that gets lost or broken in battle. This one is given to him by the Lady of the Lake, Excalibur. It's a second the, sword. The King Olnir Arthur. sounds Norse mythology of some they're, they're both. I'm guessing one of them is Beowulf. Is it Thor's? Thor's hammer is ah, a Mjolnir. That's absolutely right. And Beowulf's sword is fronting. Ah, fronting. So that's absolutely right. So they're, they're magical weapons or weapons in fables. Very good. What about that next one? Cadenza, Coda, Bridge, Movement. Those are all 
parts of a piece of music. They're sections in music, absolutely right. And the last one, half pass, flying change, passage, piaf. Those are all ballet Manoeuvres? movements. I love the way you're miming well, yes. ballet movements. Well, <laughs> I'm afraid that one I can't give you. You're very close, but it's not ballet, it is dressage. You know, the sort of the horse thing. It's sort of like, like ballet on horseback. I can tell you about some of these things only by reading it. A half pass, let me describe this to you. The horse bends slightly around the rider's inside leg with the forehand moving slightly in advance of the hindquarters as the horse travels across the diagonal. What a sport. Yes, right. Not dressage people? No, not at all. Not ballet people either, <laughs> no, really, not to really, be fair. No. I sat on a horse once. Oh, it was like trying to give a cat a bath. It's not right. Sitting on a horse, that's not right. Oh, I'm terrified. Anyway, you did solve the wall, so that's four points, and you've got three more bonus points for the connections. That is a total of seven. Very well done. Time to bring back the Celts and give them a connecting wall. A new one, of course. 16 new clues still jumbled up, still looking for that perfect solution. Four by four. All right, Celts, the lion wall has been chosen, so you've got water. Two and a half minutes to solve it, starting now. So we've got mushrooms. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking mushrooms. Okay. Um, oh, it's oyster mushroom, but it's a mushroom. Beef steak. Beef steak. Is it beef steak mushroom, is it? Yeah, yeah black trumpet. Yeah, yeah. should we try that one? Yeah. Bottom. Uh, black, black trumpet. trumpet. Oyster. Beef. No. No, okay. What else is there? Oh, I, 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 I know oh, there's Burton Race. Is a cookery judge or something? Yeah, like, Lease is a cookery, Lease? yeah. Sorry. Uh, Go on. I, I, I know that there's places in... in there's places in Edinburgh, so they're either, so, uh, Portobello. It's in Hollywood. It's not Hollywood, sir. Um, Morning side, Joppa. Morning side, Hollywood, Portobello. No. Okay. That's right, so the cooking ones is Leith, Burton Race. Race. Um, uh, Greg Wallace. Hollywood is the Paul show. Hollywood. Ah, well done, okay. Okay. What have we got now? Do you think Joppa's in Edinburgh, dear? Joppa's definitely in Edinburgh, so it's Morningside. Or... She's in Portobello. Port or... Yeah, so those three, and maybe David Davis. Yeah, go on, try it. Oh, well, there okay. we are. Are there stations in Edinburgh? So, maybe, yes. Now, okay. remember, it's three strikes and you're three out. Okay. 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 So we've got the mushrooms, which are right. oyster, beef steak, black trumpet, blew it. Then you've got home, everything lost. Maybe. Oh, that's a song by Michael Blue Haven't read you out yet, it is. It? Are these all songs by Michael Blue Play? I don't so, know him at all. No, <laughs> no, but it's... <laughs> yes, but they're not likely to be common between mushrooms no, and like a boobo. No. Got a minute left. So the mushrooms would be oyster, beef, steak. Oh. Yeah, go on, try it. Blue, Blue it. it. Yeah. And black trumpet. Yeah. Try it. That's it. You've solved the wall. Excellent. That's four points immediately. You're looking for bonus points now for the connections. OK. What about the first one? Wallace, Burton Race, Hollywood, Leith. Uh, yeah, judges on cookery competitions. They're TV cookery judges. Can you tell me their first names? It's Greg Wallace. Mm -hmm. Is it John Burton Race, is it? I think so, yeah. It is, yeah. He's, he's got a Michelin Hollywood. star. He's a chef. And Paul Hollywood. Uh, Prue Leith. Prue Leith. Yeah. Are you fans of those shows? No, Some but my them, wife's yeah. a massive fan. And, uh, Bevis. Bevis, yes. Yeah. 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 I was thinking of bringing in a round for this where we tell the teams there's a cookery round, they have to bring cakes. Obviously, we wouldn't broadcast that, but the teams <laughs> wouldn't know that till it was on air, and I'd just get a lot of snacks in the meantime. <laughs> and we could carry favour, so that would be good. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would yeah, have sounds been like great. a winner. <laughs> sounds like a winner. What about the second group? Portobello, Morningside, Joppa, Davidson's Mains. Well, they're all in Edinburgh. Uh, as, uh, are they Edinburgh stations? Scottish stations? I can take places in Edinburgh. Your places first answer. Edinburgh, they are yeah, places in Edinburgh. Well Davidson's Mains, you didn't know. It was a village. It's right. now a district in the northwest of Edinburgh. So places in Edinburgh, you're quite right. And what about this? Oyster, black trumpet, beefsteak, bluet. Uh, we believe that they're types of mushroom. They are. I'll accept types of mushroom. There's another thing as well. Can you tell me something else they have in common? Uh, nope. They're edible. <laughs> they are edible, edible fungi, although the bluet, I need to warn people, has to be cooked. In its raw state, it is, like me, mildly toxic. <laughs> All mushrooms, edible mushrooms. And what about the last group? Home, lost, everything, haven't met you yet. Well, we think <laughs> that haven't met you yet was the key that opened this one. Michael Bublé? Michael Bublé. Yeah, we yeah, think they're songs by Michael Bublé. They are singles recorded by Michael Bublé. Not a fan? 
Um, I'm not, but not. Hugh, I mean, it's <laughs> Hugh's type of music, so maybe he... <laughs> not a fan. I quite like Michael Bublé. I've never been cool anyway. Pretty cool result for you because you solved the wall, you got all four connections, you get a bonus two points for doing that, so that is a maximum of ten points. Let's see what the scores look like going into the final round. The Carter Files have got 16 points, but the Celts are ahead with 22. And if your fingers are itching for more wall activity, why not go to our website where you can play a selection of walls that you'll find there. You can even make your own. But what we'll be doing is playing the Missing Vowels round, where, of course, we've taken well-known names, phrases or sayings, removed the vowels and respaced the consonants. I'll be muttering those words on my deathbed. Teams, I'm assuming you know the rules. Fingers on buzzers. They will come in connected groups of four, and the first group are all nuts and seeds. Celts. Macadamia. Correct. Carterfiles. Filbert. Correct. Carterfiles. Coco de Mer. Correct. Carterfiles. Punk and nickel. I'm afraid that's not right. You lose a point. Possible bonus Celts. No, it's Pine Kernel. Next category, films starring Audrey Hepburn. Carterfiles. My Fair Lady. Correct. Carterfiles. Funny Face. Correct. Celts. Sabrina. Correct. Celts. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yes, it is. Next category, ten-letter occupations. Celts. Gamekeeper. Correct. Don't know this one. It's negotiator. Next clue. Card files. Auctioneer. Correct. Card files. Manicurist. Yes, it is. Next category, poisonous substances. Cartervals. Hemlock. My favourite, correct. Don't know this, it's mustard gas. Next clue. Celts. Agent Orange. Yes, it is. Celts. Carbon monoxide. Correct. Next category, religious movements. Cartervals. Huguenots. Correct. Cartervals. Latter day Saints. Correct. Well, that bell means it's the end of the quiz. And what a phenomenal round four. A great one for you. I think Josh, particularly, you're a real uh, missing vowels guy. It has brought your score, Cartervals, to an impressive 24 points. But the winners with 28 points, it's the Celts. So we will be seeing you again, Celts. And by our inexplicable new rules, we'll be seeing you again too. Please join us next week. For two more teams who will be taking no prisoners and me who will be giving no prizes. Goodbye. <laughs>